morning crypto. Good morning, warriors. Hello and welcome back to another episode of your favorite crypto news channel, Good Morning Crypto, where we bring you the most relevant and impactful crypto related topics from the top crypto research team in the world. I'm your host, Abs, joined by several members of our 3T family this morning. We got Mr. Johnny Crypto, Jackie, the crypto juggernaut, NFT Tones will be joining us, and the Node Defender is behind the scenes, so very excited for this episode. Today on Good Morning Crypto, we will be discussing how NFTs are becoming more valuable than ever. As Meta announces the integration of Ethereum and Solana NFTs to their platform, will Instagram be the next major social media to integrate this product? JP Morgan is ready for the bull market. Although prices are down over 70% in the last eight months, CEO Jamie Dimon says innovation behind the scenes is more prevalent than ever before. Kevin O'Leary and Logan Paul are taking crypto mainstream. After interviewing on the world's number one podcast, we break down how our financial system is going fully digital. The Bank of International Settlements is paving the way for mass adoption after proposing 1% allocation into Bitcoin. What could this $1.8 trillion in new liquidity do for the crypto market? The crypto queen is on the run after committing $4 billion Ponzi scheme. The FBI has added this fraudster to the top 10 most wanted list. And we have a massive announcement from the Federal Reserve as ISO protocols won't be fully implemented until March of 2025. We prepare our listeners as the banks are creating the bull run of a lifetime. Our show is available on your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. And for those of you listening via podcast, our show is live on YouTube Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern at the 3T Warrior Academy channel. So I think it's only fair that we announce from this point forward on Fridays, we will be starting at 11.15 because we just can't seem to make it here on time. But NFT Tones has just popped into the building. We'll start off with Johnny Crypto. Mr. Johnny K, how you feeling on this Friday? Well, first off, good morning, Warrior Maniacs. How are you today? Hopefully everybody's doing well. It's a beautiful day out. Uh, it's, it's happy Friday, happy weekend. Always a great thing going into a Friday. Glad to see uh, Jackie. Not only was she here on time, but that beautiful smile. And then we got NFT Tones also in the house. Should be a fun show today. And uh, and welcome to all the Warrior Maniacs out there. who Johnny, I got to call you out here. You got to be honest with our listeners. Jackie was not on time this morning. There's no reason to be fraudulent. But I do want to hear from Jackie. I see your rep in the new background. And Johnny Crypto, one thing we learned this morning is he's got your back, Jackie. How are you feeling on this Friday? Absolutely. I cannot deny the universe will never let me be on time. But time does not exist, okay? Time does not yes, exist. But I, like. I do want to say, I want to say one thing. Abs made a comment about my computer yesterday because I, I asked about manifesting a new computer. Guys, I, I absolutely love y'all so freaking much because I actually had someone text me and offer an old computer that they had at their house. And then someone asked me to put my wallet address in the chat. You guys are funny. You guys are, I mean, you guys are so sweet. Like the love I feel from this academy group. And man, that is unmatched. So we are I just the best group. Say, Jackie, it's undoubtable. We got the best community in all of yeah. crypto. So yeah. That was Jackie, so just sweet. don't put your seed phrase out there. Give the water. I will. <laughs> I will never. I will never uh, use you guys for monetary gain. Um, all I. All I need is the love. That's it. Okay. Exactly. So, if Jackie's going to so use really anybody, I really appreciate y'all, though. I of really course. Of course. And for all of our listeners out there, I really could use a new Mercedes. So if you want to start the GoFundMe <laughs> account, feel free to take initiative there. But we got NFT tones in the building. <laughs> NFT tones. Oh, my car didn't break down. No. <laughs> <laughs> NFT exactly. tones. I was watching your show that you had on Wednesday. Why don't you fill our listeners in on the new program that you're going to be running on our channel every single Wednesday? And obviously, welcome in. We're happy to have you. Same. What's up? This uh, so. We got the non-fungible show that started on Wednesdays, and we're live at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. So come join us live if you want to come see your favorite person and Salman co-host and talk about NFTs and everything that's happening in the entire NFT cryptoverse. So, uh, yeah, that's the basic gist down of that show. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, what do we have in store for today, Abs? Amazing, NFT Tones. And I'm going to put you on the spot here. You said my favorite person's going to be there, but I didn't know Johnny K was going to be on the program. <laughs> so that's really interesting. But what do you have from an NFT standpoint? What are you going to be showing our listeners today, NFT Tones? So uh, first up, we got Metaverse QR codes, what and why. Then we are talking about Sandbox announces a partnership with uh, Building Times Square. 
which we'll talk a bit more about. And then we have uh, Ring Games raises $5 million in fund funding led by Animoca Brands. And then quick uh, news on Town Crush, which awesome, is Dallas Matt, Games. I'm excited for this, man. I always learn a lot when we have you on the show, but we're going to start this thing off the same way we always do by showing you guys our Good Morning Crypto Twitter account at 3TG. I'm Crypto on Twitter, 1,413 followers. We go live on Monday. We go live on Thursday. Sometimes I do oversleep, and that's what happened last night, but we make sure somebody is on that live stream. So I want to shout out to Gonzo for covering me last night. The Bitcoin fear and greed index, well, we're still sitting in extreme fear this morning. We've been at an 11 for about a week now. Nothing to comment on there. When we look at the total market cap, we are still below 900 billion. 870 billion in total market cap this morning. Bitcoin sitting at 43% dominance. Ethereum is at 15%. Bitcoin is sitting at $19,400 this morning. We've been battling against that $20,000 range. And I even saw we got a $1,000 15-minute candle yesterday. So there is some big buying going on, which we will talk about later in the episode. Ethereum is at 11, Ethereum is just below 1100 XRP is 31 cents. Cardano is 44 cents. Avalanche is $16. Kronos, 11 cents. Stellar is 11 cents. And Hedera Hashgraph is still 6 cents this morning. Johnny Crypto, when you look at the market, there's tons of buying opportunities across the board. But what gets me excited right now is some of the stuff we're going to cover later. Venture capitalists, they're getting more involved in this market than ever before. And they're taking advantage of products like Sandbox, VeChain, HBAR, projects across the board that have so much innovation being built. What catches your attention this morning? Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, right now, I'm just not fully convinced, Abs, that all the bad news is out yet. I think there's still some more bad news to come in general in the, in the economy as a whole from a macro level. And I think that's when we'll truly see the bottom. So uh, these prices are, don't get me wrong, they get me excited. I've been dollar cost averaging in here. But I'm not dollar cost averaging in here heavy. I'm going in light because I really truly believe that there's still maybe one more leg. And I know nobody's going to want to hear that, but you know, we just got to tell you. I just say we we tell you the truth here on this show. We don't hold we don't sugarcoat none. There ain't no sugar on this show, uh, other than Jackie Smile. So at the end of the day, um, I just I don't know. My gut tells me that maybe maybe twelve thousand is in the works to see a, a bottom of Bitcoin. And I'll tell you what, man. If we see that, I'm backing up the truck, Abs. But uh, that's kind of what, so I'm just kind of playing it slowly, little dollar cost averaging on a couple all over the place, little different ones that I like. The other day I bought some Graph um, and obviously Cardano. So I'm just taking it slowly and I'm dollar cost averaging in, but very, very slowly. Awesome, Johnny. And one of the things I think is so important to remember is that bull runs end in euphoria and bear runs, they end in total chaos. And what we're experiencing right now across the board is total chaos. Most of these projects are 80% or more down from their all-time high. And that's actually affecting the S&P as well. We're extremely correlated right now. Bitcoin goes up, the S&P goes up. Bitcoin goes down, the S&P goes down. And what we're showing you guys right now is a chart that's breaking down that this bull run, well, it may just be getting started. We've been in a bearish market for about nine months now, and 70% of the liquidity has left the market in just the last eight months. Jackie, I'd love to hear from you. How do you feel overall about the market this morning? And is there any projects that you're watching? Yeah, I'm kind of just, uh, like Johnny said, just waiting and seeing what happens. We've been in this um, trading range for a while, kind of just moving sideways. I'm just, I'm just kind of waiting if we go up or down. Um, we always say that, you know, it's not going to go to zero. So only ways up, but we might have a little bit more downturn. And that's mainly, mainly what I'm looking at. But fundamental projects that we've been talking about, um, I just have cash on the sidelines for that. Trying to get liquid during this time. We, we talked a lot about that with Billy and Gonzo and Selman on our calls within the Academy on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Um, get liquid with assets so that you have some stuff to put in, you know, if we do take another, another downturn. And NFT tones, we're going to break this down later in the episode, but it's crazy to me how quickly cash went from trash to king in this market. One of the things I've realized is that sentiment can change in just a couple of months, whether it was the C19 crash or this economic collapse that we're going through now, the sentiment between retail investors just flows with the market. When people are making money, retail is optimistic. And when people are losing money, well, retail is bearish. What does this market say to you right now? And is there anything you're doing differently to operate during a bear market as opposed to when everyone's making money during a bull run? So uh, well, right now I'm DCAing into everything, all my favorite coins, such as wax and stuff like that. During the bull market, I will never ever DCA into coins again. I was kind of doing that during this last uh, bull run and 
kind of regret it. And I'm sure a lot of other people were doing it too. But now you learn always DCA during the bear markets and look for those projects and stuff in the bull market. But don't you might not necessarily want to touch them. Just take note of them. Write them down. Then when the bear market comes again, that's when you strike like a cobra or strike like a tiger and go get those coins because now they're 80, 90% down. So uh, I think you guys got to just got to pay attention and see what is happening in the current market situation with Thank the you, current man, fear times. index. I think it, now is the perfect time to start paying attention to DCA. 100%. And I do want to hear from Johnny Crypto here because we were talking before the stream with Coach JV about how this bear market is totally different than before. Not only is there more infrastructure being built in the background than there's ever been, but a lot of the banks and large hedge funds are more optimistic on this market than they were even during 2021. Why don't you talk about a lot of the development going on in the background? And as an experienced investor in this market, Johnny Crypto, what are some of the things that you're doing to not lose sight of the long term, uh, the long term growth of this market? Well, first of all, it starts with the mindset abs. Now, when I got into this space, I wasn't planning on making a quick buck overnight. I understand that I'm investing in something. I lived through the internet boom, and I saw what happened from 1996 to where we are today. And I missed it. I lived through it, but I didn't know how to invest in it. What I think, again, this is my belief, that we may be going through a very similar thing with the crypto market taking us to web 3.0 very very similar and i don't want to miss it again but i also so i i'm looking at it as long term i'm not looking at 2025 20, and beyond so if you are in that driver's seat or you're in that same car with me at 23 20, 25 and beyond then you realize i don't care what bitcoin does today or tomorrow or next week it doesn't bother me i don't care i'm, I'm looking at 2025 20, and beyond i'm waiting for regulation to come i'm waiting for the sec lawsuits to end i'm waiting for the iso 2002 coin standards to get put in place and be operational and running all that stuff's not coming until 2025 but things are going to start to happen um that will as we start to you know kind of grow up as that trend starts <laughs> this guy as we it's x baby it's x but anyway as we i'm just, I'm just gonna i'm just gonna cave in him and say okay i'm a boomer whatever you know i'm not but anyway the, the market's gonna go like this and i i want to be at the forefront in it now so whether i'm buying at eight cents or four cents or three cents it really i don't really think it matters i mean i don't want to be buying at all-time highs but where we are sitting here today with 80 percent pullbacks to me this is a pretty good time to start DCA in. in. Now, I had like a couple, I did a couple TikTok videos, and some people are like, well, why buy in at 19? It's going much lower. Look, Bitcoin may go much lower. It may go to 12. Okay. I don't know. But the point is, I know nobody here on this show or in this, in this group chat is going to know when the exact bottom is. Nobody's going to get it. The bottom line is, you kind of, you want to kind of dollar cost average in around the bottom as it's going down and as it's going up. And if you get lucky and catch the bottom, great. Okay, every blind squirrel finds a nut, right? But so I'm trying to, as we come down, I'm taking little pieces away. And then when we hit the bottom, we capitulate and we go up. I want to be buying up on that on that little capitulation up. I don't want to be buying once we've hit euphoria. So that's kind of my strategy. That's my plan. And you're looking at these companies that are starting to also, I think, do a similar thing. Michael Saylor just bought another 10 million, although that's chump change to him. You see Grayscale. They're trying, these poor guys are trying to launch an ETF in the freaking SEC moment. So these companies, they want to invest in this, but they can't until regulation comes. So as soon as it comes, you're going to see, I think you're going to see this thing pop. And we're going to break that down today, how regulation is going to allow for these banks and institutions to to flood trillions of dollars into the crypto market. If you guys are enjoying this content, show us some love and smash that like button. Let the algorithm pump this video out to as many crypto right. listeners as possible. But we're going to get this thing started off with our first article today, which is a very, very bullish article, not only for the crypto market, but for Bitcoin in particular. The Bank of International Settlements will now allow banks to keep 1% of its reserves in Bitcoin. So the BIS intends to extend its hand to this new asset class by allowing banks to hold up to 1% of its reserves in cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. The proposal for the limiting the bank's total exposure to Group 2 crypto assets of 1% of Tier 1 capital. This is very, very exciting. So you may say, oh, what is 1% of Tier 1 capital for the banks? 
Well, that would be $1.8 trillion, not only flooding into the cryptocurrency market, but flooding into Bitcoin specifically. And that's going to move this whole thing. If we're going to experience a long-term bear market where Ethereum is touching prices as low as $300 and Bitcoin is touching $12,000, well, many of these altcoins are going to get wiped out completely. And it's moves like this that are going to allow for this bear market to get absorbed by larger institutions. And many of these projects will end up surviving. Johnny Crypto, how do you feel about this? $1.8 trillion of new liquidity being entered into the crypto market and specifically Bitcoin. I mean, this is the kind of thing where, you know, people say, oh, Bitcoin has got no value. Bitcoin's garbage. Bitcoin is a shit coin, all this kind of stuff, right? But the reality is, I think the elites in the world, the, the, the people who run everything, have decided that Bitcoin is going to be a store of value. I think it is going to be an asset that's traded. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I like it or not. I know we're not batting maxis here, but the point is, I do believe in the long run, this is just the start. This is the first thing in 1%. Wait till when everybody's 401k is in this thing and when all these companies are allowed to invest in it and put it in all these different ETFs. The demand for it, I think, is going to go up. It's only going to have 21 million coins ever. So I really, really believe, you know, whether or not it's an inflation hedge or not, I'm not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, I don't think it is. But I think the reality is people are going to hold on to it and it's limited. There's 21 million and that's it. And if the world starts buying it up, if these banks start putting in 1% and 401ks start putting it up, you're going to see this price. I can't see it not going over into six figures. So this is exciting news to me to see that they're allowed to do 1%. And I abs, I think that number will creep up over time as we get regulation. And the rest of the world feels more comfortable about crypto. Nobody feels comfortable about crypto except us 5% who know about it. Um, so I think you'll see this number only go up over time. But that's just my my guess. I could be wrong. One thing that's absolutely clear to me when I read articles like this is how early we really are. We'll often have the conversation about how early are we in this market, right? Everyone who got in from the 2011 till now has profited thousands of X on their original investment. And that's what we're trying to capture here as new investors in this cryptocurrency market. And what gets me excited about the exponential growth that I think we're going to go through well, is the fact that the banks are publicly backing this technology now. It was it, Maybe it was only two or three years ago where JP Morgan was firing employees for owning Bitcoin. And now we have one of the largest banking institutions on the planet saying that they're going to allocate 1% of their tier one capital into this asset class. But what really gets me excited is the $1.8 trillion mark. 1% of the banking total portfolio is $1.8 trillion. And that's the tip of the iceberg for this market. Jackie, what catches your attention here? Um, this is a lot of confusing stuff. If you guys haven't looked this over, um, I, I really kind of some of the things that I caught, uh, it does, it does kind of hint at other cryptocurrencies, but like Johnny said, um, this, this kind of just throws me back through my own personal journey through crypto. And I know a lot of people are, are similar. Um, and this is where you kind of have to self-reflect because, and, and realize how early it is, you know, when you first get into crypto, you hear about Bitcoin, then you hear about Ethereum, then maybe the top 10, and then you start to research and research and deep dive into these real big dev projects into the thousands and two thousands, right. And you're throwing your money left and right, you know, and you're so excited because crypto is this whole new world for you, but articles like these. And when you actually dig into the regulation, how far we are actually along, you know, in a, in this time span, we, we're just an inch, right? This, this is going to go so much further down the road. And so that's, that's where you kind of have to realize and pump the brakes, brakes a little bit. Um, and, you know, people, people that got wrecked with this, you know, being over leveraged and, and being over diversified into things, projects that were so small and didn't have utility and just had a name and chasing the dollar, you know, that's where they, people are now starting to get hit and burned and, but they're starting to self reflect and realize like, Hey, this technology needs time. And so, Oh wait, dang it. I got to read that comment later. It said, if Jackie keeps coming in late, you guys are going to have to call this good afternoon. Crypto instead of good morning. Crypto. <laughs> yo, yo, my, yo, crypto GT seven. You owe me a pair of pants. You just made me piss oh, my pants. Oh. You brought, I, I, no, just kidding. No, but I was on a tangent and then I saw my name and yeah. I know, Johnny the Crypto, mind, distracting, Jackie, distracting Jackie, distracting Jackie at the so worst sorry, possible Jackie. time. No, we'll we'll dial it. I'll, Jackie, I'll, it was too good of a comment to let well, it go. I'm sorry. I remember, I remember what I was saying though. <laughs> Lucky for you, I remember. No, um, but that's what I'm saying is, 
you kind of do have to pump the brakes and and really really like top 10 top 20 projects like is yeah. what is what you need to be looking at uh, that was my point but exactly that was, jackie that was really funny good afternoon crypto and i do think that they're going to continue to expand further into this market talking about how this provisional limit of one percent of tier capital well that's going to be reviewed periodically which means that I can anticipate in the future, they're not only going to open this up to larger portfolio allocation into Bitcoin. I do think they're going to get more comfortable dollar cost averaging or buying large chunks of products such as Ethereum, Solana, ADA, and Polygon. Johnny Crypto, I'd love to hear some of your closing remarks. We always talk about look at what they do and not what they say. And the BIS has been extremely critical of cryptocurrencies, yet now they're paving the way for mass adoption here. We saw them criticize... Um, saying that crypto can never fulfill the role of money in our society and that crypto and the blockchain industry, including high fees and network congestion, well, they can lead to a landscape fragmentation saying that they could possibly break down the money system and how it's being used today. What do you think about this example here of doing as they do and not as they say? Yeah, I mean, that's what we preach here all the time. You know, these lying crook criminals, you have to be very careful and you have to watch what they're actually doing. And we want to be you know, replicating to some extent, if you feel confident in what they're doing, not what they're saying. So, I mean, to me, uh, it's just a perfect example here of, 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 you know, do what they do, not what they say. NFT Tones, I want to hear from you before we close it out. You're obviously a huge advocate for play to earn in NFTs, but can you just tell me a little bit about your background with Bitcoin? How long do you think Bitcoin is going to continue to drive this market? And when you see articles like this, well, what does this tell you about the market as a whole? Well, you you know bitcoin you can compare it to two things internet gold and or power energy and that's kind of what bitcoin is and i feel like bitcoin will be around for a long long time i don't think bitcoin is going anywhere anytime soon and i think to be honest with you in the future bitcoin we will see bitcoin at a hundred thousand two hundred thousand eventually in the future but we just got to give it proper time and let people educate themselves on this space don't forget only five percent of the world is in crypto maybe not even so the more as more and people get involved i think we're going to see the space change and people won't be as skeptic against bitcoin ethereum and I think that it's going to change how banks and everything operate. As we can already see, um, people are, the banks are take, keeping it as 1% in reserves. And that's probably because the U.S. dollar isn't as stable as it used to be. It's starting to die. So it's really interesting to see what, what is happening. 100% NFT tones. And I feel like as mass adoption goes on and takes place here, there's only 21 million Bitcoin. And the fact that the banks are going to be competing to store this currency, it's very good for the entire market. We got over 160 live listeners out there. Show us some love and smash that like button. We are about to dive into some news from the Federal Reserve, breaking down the ISO 20022 protocol. So please show us some love and smash that like button. The Fedwire Fund Service ISO 20022 Implementation Center well, it's delayed the protocols until 2025. The Board of Governors for the Federal Reserve System that the Federal Reserve Banks will adopt the ISO message messaging format in March 10th of 2025. They talked about this taking place over a three-day period. And when we always reference the flipping of the switch that's going to take place in this market, well, it's always centered around XRP. And these ISO protocols are going to play a huge role in that. Johnny Crypto, 2023 is the year of institutional adoption, but 2025 is the year of generational wealth. This is another example of that. If they're going to start implementing these coins and these protocols in 2025, we should get a lot of that price appreciation in the years leading up to that date. What does this article say to you, Johnny? Yeah, uh, possibly. I'm not so sure. We will, we will maybe because there'll be a speculative play part of it, right? But the reality is the stuff has to be implemented. It has to get working and it has to be in use. And that's going to take, you know, if it's just starting in 2022 or 2025, then you really start to get, you know, that growth over the next five or 10 years. And what I've said is, I think at the end of the day, this market isn't going to hit its peak until 20 years after 2025, right? Just the way, uh, again, I'm copying very similar to the web takeoff where it started in 96, but you really didn't see, you know, Amazon didn't hit 3000 back then. It hit it just recently, right? It took 20 years later almost. So I think it's going to be a similar thing. Abs, but I do believe that this is a good place as any 
for trying to figure out a market that has 20,000 coins and only a few are going to survive, which ones are going to survive, I would place a bet. And again, guys, don't base it on me or what we say here. Do your homework. But to me, the ISO 2002 coins is probably a good fundamental start. That's what I'm doing. I'm investing in a lot of those, all of them. I don't know which ones are going to be here, which ones are going to make it, which ones aren't going to make it, even within those uh, or new ones that may come out. But I do feel this is good news. Um, I do feel that this is a good place to, to look at. You know, if you're trying to stake a little bit of your future investment somewhere and you're not sure where to go, this is definitely a good starting point, in my opinion. Not financial advice. Totally agree, Johnny. And for anybody who's confused about what these ISO coins are, well, they're going to be used for transferring money across border in the new banking system. Right now, there's $5.3 trillion transferred cross border every single day. And many of the currencies that we're all familiar with, such as XRP, XLM, Algorand, well, they're going to be some of the most important currencies on the planet over the next decade. Jackie, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on the new ISO protocols. People always talk about the ISO protocols being the fundamental shift away from our fiat currency into this new digital asset system. Well, what does this say to you that Stellar and Ripple may be some of the most prominent currencies in this new messaging system? Um, I really like this diagram because it helps people kind of understand. I mean, diagrams help people, you know, visual, but it's what you touched on. Um, it's kind of just going to run um, right along the, with the rails of, of the current system that we have. I mean, you, if you look back at that diagram, it talks about the SWIFT system. I mean, it integrates the SWIFT system with with Ripple, with XRP. Um, and then you, you see some of those other coins. I don't you just took it off, but whatever. Um, but Sorry, it's, Jackie, I got a little distracted. No, no. It's Stellar, it's Ripple, it's IOTA, it's Algorand. And many speculate that Quant is also going to be involved in transferring a lot of the information from the old messaging system into these new banking protocols. So you could include Quant and HBAR on this list as well. Abs, don't forget XDC. I know if our boy Aaron yeah. Brown is out there, he's going to hang you. But well, I said IOTA. IOTA is XDC. Uh, well, no, no Zinfin is XDC. They're different. Oh, sorry, sorry. My bad. They're, they're two different coins, but IOTA's gotcha. in there, XDC's in there, and I do believe you, uh, Quant, as well. Sorry, continue, Jack. I actually I actually heard a rap song the other day. This is totally off topic. I heard a rap song the other day, and I thought he said XDC, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it turns out he said XRP, Jackie. That's what it was. <laughs> hey, they do mention crypto in, in a lot of the new outcoming rap songs, guys. So, so Jackie, I want to get one more comment here. JP Morgan is also on this list, and JP Morgan's been so critical of cryptocurrencies. When do you think that people are going to start publicly acknowledging that the banks are going to become the largest advocate to this stuff? Bank of International Settlements, Fidelity is now allocating 20% into Bitcoin. And we have JP Morgan not only creating their own currency, but being a centerpiece in this new financial system. Why don't you take us home here? Gosh, I, I can't say when. Um, I, I feel like it's soon, though. I mean, all of these media articles are coming out saying that, you know, banks are allowing people to put in, um, allowing people to start investing into crypto or into, you know, hedge funds, including crypto assets, things like that. So I, I think the narrative is just being... I don't know. It's becoming more familiar. So people are less scared. I, I feel like it's pretty soon if, exactly. if they will allow, if the banks will allow. And you know, what's important, Jackie, is that more and more celebrities and public figures, although they have no, they should not be telling people what to do with their finances. When people see people like Joe, Joe Rogan or Snoop Dogg or well-known celebrities entering this market, it makes them more comfortable with the idea that they should be doing the same thing. And I think we're only going to see more and more of that going forward. We're going to dive into our next article for today, which is an NFT article. NFTs to appear on Facebook, cross post with Instagram as Meta and Web3 expansion continues. This is going to be huge. NFTs are going to be fully integrated into not only Facebook's platform, but they're going to eventually move them onto Instagram as well, only giving more and more utility to NFTs. So I'd love to hear from NFT Tones here. Facebook will support non-fungible tokens with digital collectibles tab on creators' timelines to display their work. The displayed screenshots of NFTs in the creators page went live on Thursday and NFT creators will be able to cross post between Facebook and Instagram starting very soon. The app allows NFTs to be minted on Ethereum and Polygon to be displayed with other NFTs from Solana and Flow planning to be integrated as well. We're going to see more and more moves into this market from large players, but NFT tones, what does this do for the overall NFT market? Giving more and more utility to projects like this should only increase their value. What does this article say to you? Well, for me, it tells me that this time is starting to get really exciting. And this shouldn't surprise anybody either, because 
don't forget Facebook is creating meta. And so they want to find a way to easily get people into NFTs. This is their way of doing it. They're going to allow people to create profiles and stuff like that, make uh, profile pics, import them, use them there, put them in Instagram. And then when all that, as people start to use it more and more and more, then the metaverse is going to come and we'll start to see more what Facebook wants to do with their metaverse and how it's going to turn out. So I think that this is really, really important. And it's actually funny because I called this out last night in our Twitter uh, stream too. So I, yeah, I think that this is going to be really, really important in that Facebook is going to become a major player in this space and that there's something to uh, watch out for. What gets my attention here is that they're giving a free pass to Ethereum and oftentimes Solana as well, adopting their NFTs before ADA and some of these other protocols. When do you think we're going to see real competitors to Ethereum getting some advantages when it comes to mass adoption? I think we're going to start to see it sometime soon. Not, I don't think that it's too far away because we see more in bridges and stuff coming. So I think it's only a matter of time before it actually comes. Awesome. Thank you, Tones. And Johnny Crypto, we're showing a tweet now. Facebook is now testing NFTs live on profiles, and we're showing you a little glimpse of what that's going to look like. What do you think this is going to do for our market, Johnny Crypto? And how do you feel about NFTs becoming more and more valuable going forward? There's been tons of skepticism around, are these projects even long-term, or were people just buying bored apes for no good reason? What does it say to you, Johnny? You're going to see this market. Well, let me rephrase. In my opinion, I think we're going to see this market transform. Right now, NFT is a huge buzzword. It's a huge hype word. And people in the elites and the VCs are playing uh, the hype game and they're stealing everybody's money through NFTs right now. I think, you know, so that's what's happening. You know, it's just a reality, right? Um, but I think in the future, because NFTs have real utility to some degree, ownership rights, things like that, where maybe play to earn can come in handy. I do believe you'll see a transformation of NFTs being this ugly thing right now that's being hyped and stealing our money to something that's maybe useful in the future um, when we get regulation. That has to come first. And then when you get a company like Facebook, that the minute they do something, right, 1.6 billion people are aware of it. So it's instant credibility. If Facebook tells you it's safe to use it, people think it's safe to use, right? You said that earlier about, about celebrities. Same thing with big companies. So Facebook will bring, in my opinion, credibility to NFTs and make them real. That's when people will maybe really start to trust them. But Facebook's not going to rug pull you, right? They can't because they're going to get sued. So I think they're going to – so I think they're going to, A, maybe, maybe they're going to wait for regulation or maybe not because they're starting to test the waters right now with it to see how it plays. But I think it's going to be huge, um, and I think they will be the ones that maybe help kind of – solidify nfts but i would only buy nfts like on companies that are reputable like a facebook i wouldn't be buying it from stuff that i don't know until regulation comes and the market gets cleaned up regulation is going to drive mass adoption for these nfts and when people talk about the real world utility of nfts i think it's going to center around things like sporting events flight tickets Things that are being given as QR codes, well, a QR code is basically an outdated version of a digital contract, and NFT is a more viable, it's easier to trace who actually owns these assets, but NFT tones, sorry, I want to kick it to Jackie here. Jackie, what does this article say to you? I'm questioning why everyone's still calling it Facebook. I thought they rebranded to Meta. <laughs> they did. No, they um, <laughs> oh, but that's that's kind of funny how how things just stick right um and and so kind of to play off of what johnny was saying um nfts right we've talked about that a lot they they're just a hype play right now they were a hype play now you know it, it'll be interesting to see when the utility actually um gets put into play i, I forgot what i was gonna say after that um yeah that's okay we'll i'll still back. I'll steal the mic here because I do have a very interesting article lined up next, which is that the first spot Bitcoin ETF, well, it's going to be launched in Europe. We just saw that Grayscale was denied access to launch this exact same product in the United States, but this is going to be huge for mass adoption overseas because they don't have any investment vehicles like this today. So why a spot Bitcoin ETF? The ETF will enable investors to access the underlying performance of this exciting asset class via a well-established and trusted investment structure 
what we're going to see here is more large banks and institutions being comfortable putting money into Bitcoin because they can just put it into a spot Bitcoin ETF or a product like this. Johnny Crypto, we're watching mass adoption happen overseas. What does this say to you about the long-term utility of this stuff? Well, in terms of long-term utility, this is the beginning, and this is exactly what you want to see. You're just not going to see it happen in the U.S. until I think we get regulations. I just sound like a broken record. Regulation and the SEC lawsuits out of the way, and that needs to happen. And I think you're going to see that the – now, I don't know if you guys know this, but Grayscale flipped the table – and there are actually they are actually suing the SEC. So I think you're going to see that lawsuit and the XRP lawsuit conveniently and around the same time. Mark the words now. What's the hell's today's date? July 1st, 22. Johnny told you you're going to see both of those somehow. They're going to end around the same time. Everything's going to be great. And poof, the doors are going to open. And I think you start to see things begin to explode. And I bet you that's probably a year from now still. Jackie, and it's clear that more institutions are getting excited about Bitcoin because that's exactly what this article says. This aligned with the de growing demand from institutional investors to have an opportunity to buy assets like this. Now we're going to have investment vehicles for trillions of dollars to flood into this market. That's what Kevin O'Leary is constantly talking about. That's what the Bank of International Settlements is working on. What does this article say to you about the long-term growth of Bitcoin? I'm a little disappointed that the ETF got... Um the spot ETF got approved in somewhere else. Uh, I just, I don't know. Um, but I kind of, I kind of am not surprised that that happened just because of the U S you know, we've, we've kind of been dropping the ball left and right on things like that. Um, as far as bringing about regulation, but Hey, uh, it, to answer your question as I think, you know, it, it will bring about more comfortability within the U S um, people. I don't know if regular you, Retail investors aren't looking at an article like that and saying like, hey, why is the ETF not approved here besides us? Um, so, so yeah, I think, you know, eventually it will hit here. Eventually it will. It's just in due time. What I and that's what I was going to say. I do want to, I want to go back to what I was going to say about the NFT. I was, um, it's a hype play right now. And so that's why we talk a lot about the, you know, the trust of, of who's behind the project, who the team members are, and the community. Community right now in crypto and NFTs is huge. We talked a lot about this on our Twitter spaces last night. Um, Selman, shout out to Selman. He is one of our team members within the Academy. Um, he's he's a smart dude. He sees it. He's he's in the space every day, every hour almost. That, that guy never sleeps either. He's like a mini Johnny. Um, so so he was talking a lot about community right now. And I said this yesterday, I'm not investing in NFTs. The only NFT that I will invest in is Collecti, um, which is Selman's project um, in the NFT space. But he talked a lot about, you know, if if things are going the way you want as far as regulation or within within the space or niche itself, um, be be the rail be the guardrails, be the rail, um, the new rail system, right? So that's what he's doing with that NFT project. He's he's planning to build out everything that's, you know, and people are going to build out through him. So so shout out to Selman. I thought that that was very unique. And that's, that's the way to play it if you're early enough, for sure. So 100% Jackie. And I love this comment we got from XRP Godly out there. I don't know if this guy listens to us or he just agrees with what we say, but he says it's all a game. The lawsuit, it's given the green light for them to stifle innovation in the United States and move us towards a central bank digital currency system where they're just issuing the exact same thing we have now, a digital version of a fiat currency that's not only infinite, but it's controlled by a government that's not a U.S. entity, not elected officials. Johnny Crypto, you got any closing comments there? Uh, I guess he is listening to the show. He's spot on. That's what we've been saying all along, that there's there's some players that have decided the U.S. are going to be followers in the space, not leaders. We talk about this over and over on this show. So we all know the game. We know we're being held back. This, we don't know why. We're never going to know why. It ain't going to matter. But at some point, they're going to launch it, probably 2025. And, um, you know, I think that's when we'll all see, you know, be in position for generational wealth. So that's how I'm looking at the abs. I don't even worry about it anymore. But I do agree with him that it's all coordinated, it's all planned, and it's all going to happen when the big boys decide it's going to happen.
A hundred percent. And we're waiting for regulation because we know that's going to be a huge catalyst for this market. We're about to show you guys a clip from Kevin O'Leary breaking down not only how he allocates his crypto portfolio, but what he's anticipating for these markets as a whole. We got 170 live listeners out there. Show us some love and smash that like button. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you hit that like button, people. We're going to continue to be the most relevant and impactful crypto related team on all the interweb. We'll let this thing play and then we'll get comments from the group. Bitcoin 2022, for the first time on the first day, I looked out in the audience, it was all the giant institutional investors. They never come to this Let's conference, go. never. And I started asking guys, what are you doing here? And they're saying, we sense the world's changing. We see the policy coming. We see these senators showing up here. We know they're going to make this thing investable. It's going to be huge. We're going to make it. Let's go. Oh, we we, we are going to make it. Are gonna make it. Yeah. I read 20% of your... We going to make it, baby. A great quote from Logan Paul there, but I do think exa- what he's saying is so prevalent. Johnny Crypto, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts. We know this is targeted at a younger demographic. Why don't you speak for the young people out there? What do you think this market's going to do over the next 20 years, Johnny? Uh, <laughs> like I said, I showed you the chart, or you showed the chart two weeks ago or last week. This market's going to skyrocket. Mr. Wonderful is spot on. They are making it investable. But they're going to do it on their timeline, on their time frame when it's ready. And the great thing for everybody here, for the 5% of you who are awake, pat yourself on the back. Don't break your arm while you do it. Uh, absolutely. You know, you're here early. You're going to be able to maybe create generational wealth and the huge windfall that could be potentially coming from the technologies that do survive and make it to the future. Because like he just said, they are making it investable. And why do you think Mr. Wonderful, who's worth billions of dollars, has 20%, okay, 20% of his money. So if he only has a billion, that's $200 million in crypto, right, boys? Billionaires don't put $200 million into something if they think they're going to lose it. So I'm super bullish in the long run. I love the fact that Mr. Wonderful did a complete 180. He was against crypto a few years ago. He's a smart guy. He did his research, and he realized, holy shit, this is where the future is. I need to get in this. And Abs, I know you love him because I think he's part or or half Lebanese. Just like your boy, Johnny, half Lebanese. But one of the things that I love about Kevin O'Leary is that he's not afraid to change his mind, and he's become more and more comfortable backing cryptocurrencies. What's important to know about Logan Paul's podcast is that it's a very young demographic. It targets people 27 and under, and they get about 5 million downloads every single week. So the fact that they're talking about this mainstream crypto adoption, it's going to get a lot of young people in this market more familiar and comfortable getting involved in this asset class. We're going to let the remainder of this clip play, and then we'll go back to the group for some comments. Uh, Of your wealth is in in crypto now or your investments. I've got 32 different positions on. I'm I'm very fortunate. The way I look at it, And I think the best way to look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not a coin, it's software. Ethereum software, Solana software, Helium software, Polygon software. They're software development teams. Either believe in what they're doing, you know. If you like what they're doing, I like what the guys are doing at Polygon. They're reducing gas fees by aggregating transactions. Why wouldn't I put some dough into that? It makes sense to me. And so I met the team over in Dubai. I said, guys, I got to get a piece of this. And so I'm investing privately in these things. I'm an investor in FTX. I have to disclose I'm a paid spokesperson for FTX as well, along with Tom Brady. That's a good crew to be with. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and so it's fun. And I, I believe in what they're doing. And so it, it, to me, this is the 12th sector of the S&P. We just don't know it yet. And in 10 years, you're going to turn, we're going to wake up and say, wow, we have 11 sectors. Now we have 12. Mm. That's, wow. It's so big part of the, it's such a big part of the economy. And this is why I feel so comfortable telling our listeners that they're not only ahead of the game, but they are going to be the generational wealth builders in their paradigm because of the wealth opportunities that we're being exposed to right now. Kevin O'Leary is talking with great confidence about the long-term utility of this crypto market and the fact that in 10 years, we're going to look back and say, we're here right now. What we're going through was the number one time to build generational wealth. And we always talk about how billionaires are built in the bear market. Well, there's going to be some billionaires listening to our show right now. And Johnny Crypto's on the screen. So you're listening to another billionaire talk to you guys about the long-term utility of cryptocurrency. This gets me so excited, but I'd love to hear from Jackie and NFT Tones. Jackie, why don't we start with you? How do you feel about Kevin O'Leary talking about institutions showing up to crypto events and ready to get involved? Yeah, that, that makes me very bullish as well. I like that he's going out. Um, you know, that it says 
a lot that he's going out and actually meeting these people. And, um, you know, that makes people, people follow Logan Paul. Like you said, it touches a, a younger generation. Um, and you know, to hear someone like Kevin O'Leary and for people to research Kevin O'Leary and, you know, kind of the things that he does, um, you know, it'll make them more comfortable within the space, uh, to be able to invest in. Well, I love that he, I love that he knows his stuff. You know, he mentions projects, Helium, Polygon. He mentions what they actually do. Um, so I like Kevin O'Leary. I like that he's actually doing research on his own. You know, he's not just someone with a big pocketbook throwing things into into projects that he knows nothing about, that people are just whispering in his ear, in his ear about. So it's good to hear that he's going out to Dubai, meeting people, going, going to these conferences and listening in. Um, I mean, that makes it, if it makes us comfortable, you know, people who are researching the space as well, you know, it should make regular retail investors comfortable also. So, Hey, shout out to Logan Paul NFT tones. Cause he does own a crypto punk and he's been a huge advocate of not only NFTs, but of the way that Gary V has been approaching this market. And we love Gary V on this channel. How do you feel about what Kevin O'Leary had to say? And how do you feel about Logan Paul owning a crypto punk and being part of the communities that are creating so much awareness around crypto? Uh, it's exciting to see that Logan Paul got involved and it's it, exciting to see what Kevin O'Leary is doing because what these smart people are doing, they're, they're t giving us signals. This is smart people doing smart things, doing stuff with smart money. So if we follow them, we can get indications and ideas of potential plays and ideas. Obviously not financial advice, but always pay attention to what smart money and what the big people are doing because Honestly, you could make a lot of money just by following along. Exactly. Do as they do and not as they say. And that's what we talk about all the time on our channel. We got 183 live listeners out there. Show us some love and smash that like button. We are about to hear from Johnny Crypto. I'm very excited for you to address this tweet, Johnny, because we saw that MicroStrategies purchased an additional 480 Bitcoins, averaging about a $20,800 buy. And that was a $10 million investment into Bitcoin during this past week. But what caught my attention is that Peter Schiff, who's been a longtime critic of cryptocurrencies, says that increasing your stake by less than 0.004% seems like an attempt to influence the market by demonstrating your conviction to others. But if you're so sure about Bitcoin that it's so cheap right now, why not buy $100 million worth? You must think there's still lots of downside left to go in this market today. I actually agree with Peter Schiff here. This is a very, very small buy from Michael Saylor and MicroStrategies, especially when they were averaging in at $55,000 of Bitcoin. Why are they only buying $10 million worth of Bitcoin now at these very low prices? Johnny Crypto, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, so first off, you have to understand that Peter Schiff is a gold bug, right? That means he loves, loves, absolutely loves gold and thinks there's nothing better than earth. He's a gold maxi, okay? So when you understand that, now you understand, and he hates crypto, so... Um, you have to take everything he says with a grain of salt. So the first sentence here, the top sentence is he's a complete moronic fool in that statement. It's just, it's just, I, it's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous to say that a guy like this is trying to influence the market to say, Hey, yeah, it's safe to come in and buy it. Uh, while I do agree that $10 million is chump change to, um, to sailor. Right. I mean, that's like, you know, that's like you and I walking down the street and a dollar falls out of our pocket Right, like that's ten million bucks is like a buck to him. It's nothing. So, I agree that's a very small amount. But to say that he's trying to influence the market, Michael Saylor's a very smart guy. He's not going to come in and try to influence the market when it's a beer market. He knows the economy is going to shit. He knows that regulation isn't here yet. He's not a fool. I actually believe the second portion of this comment is spot on, where I think Saylor believes we are going lower. Um, but Sailor doesn't know where the bottom is either, right? None of us know where the bottom is. So this is exactly what we've been saying we do here. You dollar cost average in when you start seeing prices that make sense that are dropping. And think about this. The first time Bitcoin dropped to 17, 18,000, around 20,000, Sailor didn't come in. He saw it touch there again. Now, when you look at most bottoms, they usually are a double bottom. You'll see a hit, a go up and come back down again. So he bought on the second one. Makes total sense. I would do the same thing. In fact, if I had the find, in fact, I'm probably going to do that. But this makes sense to pick up a small piece here and see if this is the bottom. If it isn't and it keeps going further down, I wouldn't be surprised if Sailor does go heavier as we go further down. So to me, I think this is just Sailor dollar cost averaging into a position that he really likes. 
But I don't think he's convinced we're at the bottom either. I think he thinks we're going lower. And if we don't and we start going up, I won't be surprised if he starts to buy a little bit on the way up below 30000 because we know his average is dirty. He probably wants to kind of dollar cost average down a bit. So that's what I think is going on there. Uh, this is not Sailor's attempt to try and manipulate a market with $10 million. No, that's just a ridiculous statement in my opinion. Absolutely, Johnny, and I totally agree. Peter Schiff has been publicly critical of cryptocurrencies well before the bull run we experience now. And I actually went deep diving on his Twitter account last night and found that in 2020, his son made a very large purchase of Bitcoin. And Peter Schiff took to his Twitter to publicly criticize his son, calling him an 18-year-old who's never done anything with his life and never had a real job. Why would anyone be buying this currency? Well, turns out he was historically correct. He made a large buy at $8,000 for Bitcoin and rode that thing up all the way to $70,000. But we're almost running out of time in our show today. We only have 10 minutes left. So we got 182 live listeners. Show us some love and smash that like button. We have a very interesting story right here, which is the crypto queen behind a $4 billion scam. Well, she's been added to the FBI's most wanted list. So the Bulgarian fraudster behind the infamous OneCoin Ponzi scheme will be added to the Federal Bureau of Investigation's top 10 most wanted list. The self-proclaimed crypto queen has been accused of scamming her victims out of $4 billion with her fraudulent Ponzi scheme crypto. She disappeared back in 2017 and investigators have tried to been track her down for years to no avail. Some suggested that she may have surgically altered her appearance after she made $4 billion in this Ponzi scheme. And authorities are also speculating that she may be heavily armed. So one of the things that catches my attention here is that she's been on the run for four years and she seems like she's not going to be caught by the U.S. government. Many of the people are speculating that she's physically altered her appearance. It's kind of a funny story, but it's kind of true because she stole all this money. NFT tones, people are terrified of Ponzi schemes in this market. What does this story say to you and how afraid are you of people getting their money rug pulled in this turbulent market? Yo, I am actually really, really scared of that. But on a side note, I just find this whole story like really, really wild. The fact that she might have changed her face and stuff like holy crap like that is that is really going a step ahead thinking ahead like she must have really might have had this like planned out knowing what she did but anyway it's because of people like this you need to be aware of shit that's going on because this is really scary like four billion yeah four billion dollars like wow like holy crap this is why you need to be aware pay attention to all projects see what's going on, pay attention to the community. If you don't like something, if you if your gut is saying don't do it, don't do it because most likely your gut is telling you that for a reason. So always be on the safe side and trust your gut. Jackie, $4 billion, that's a big chunk of change. So I wouldn't blame her for altering her appearance to keep all that money. What does this article say to you about the FBI putting somebody who was involved in a crypto Ponzi scheme on the FBI's most wanted list? I found this to be very interesting. Yeah, this is a crazy story. So it wasn't um, actually a project. It was kind of like a trading um, subscription. I looked a little more into what uh, it was. It was like a service that they were selling. So it was one coin um, Ponzi scheme. You guys can read a little more into uh, what that was. But this was drawn out um, over over years. So she's an intelligent person. I'm not going to lie. Uh, she was back in crypto back in, I think it started, this started back in 2008, 2009 or 2014. I can't remember. No, I think it was 2014 when they started the whole charade, but it was drawn out for quite some time. Um, but man, uh, they could have suckered anyone into that because for people who, who know nothing about crypto now, could you even imagine back then, you know? So, um, it, it's just crazy. That is just like NFT tones. You really got to you really got to vet people out. You've got to vet teams out and you've got to vet services out, too, as well. Um, and that's that's a point I want to touch on right now is there are so many companies out there now that are willing that are selling crypto services, whether it be trading, whether it be not financial advice, financial advice, um, whether it be, you know, anything like that. Um, hey, you could even clump us into, you know, that type of environment as well. But I do want to say 3T Academy is so much more different than any type of subscription, um, such as this Ponzi scheme that they are selling, because 
you know, all of our people are vetted. All of our people are out there. Um, you can, you can research us. People show up at our headquarters here and we're all in the gym, you know, so, so, but more than that, we're a community. Um, we, we really deep dive into these things and do our research and it's, it's a family, um, environment aspect that you're getting from us. And it, it goes beyond crypto as well. Um, 3T Academy is, is a mindset group. It's, you know, it's something much larger than crypto, much larger than fitness, much larger than, than all of those things. So I did want to throw that out there. Be careful, of, be careful of what you're investing into as far as developing your personal, you know, your personal development. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. She probably has a new face and a better set of cans. I wouldn't be surprised with $4 billion. I would suspect that. You know, and this is not shocking a lot. Not you day. never cease to shock me. <laughs> <laughs> the day that does, I'll no longer be on the show. I promise you, Jackie. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, the, the drug cartel guys do this all the time too. They change their faces to get away from the FBI and the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the grips of the law. So yeah. So I'm not surprised. I mean, at the end of the day, she either is part of this lying snake weasel team, and they're going to let her go scot free, or and she probably made a lot of people a lot of money, or she just, like I said, new face, new set of cans, and she's on to a new life, and I don't think we're ever going to find her. But this is the thing that you need to be worried about in crypto, and this is why regulation is so important, is that hopefully it'll minimize it. It's never going to go away because this happens all the time in the stock market, too. There's pump and dumps every day. And so I don't think it's going to go away, but I think – the amount of it that we see maybe will be controlled. It'll be minimized. I think that's the whole goal is to minimize that. But so, I mean, I tell folks right now, I don't invest in NFTs. I don't really take a risk. I try to stick on just the technologies that we know are going to be here. But if you are going to invest in NFTs, you got to ask yourself, why am I buying this? What value does it bring? And how is it generating sustainable income? I mean, if you're buying art or something, that's a different story. But if you're buying something with a promise that's going to make you money, you better know how they're making money first. And a lot of these, they were never making money other than just, you know, more money from another purchase. So just be very careful, guys out there. Don't get don't get caught. 100%. And we're going to dive into our last article for today, which is an XRP-related tweet here. A couple of days ago, the XRP network exploded with unique addresses interacting on the network, exceeding 200,000 accounts for the first time since February of 2020. Well, this is worth watching. And one of the things that catches my attention as an XRP holder is that during these crazy times, XRP has held up surprisingly well, sitting at that 31 cent range. Johnny Crypto, Jackie, and NFT Tones, I'd love to hear from you. Why don't we start with Johnny about the strength of uh, XRP is showing during this bear market? Well, I mean, strength. We're sitting at, what, 35, 36 cents? I don't know if I'd call it strength. Um, it is interesting that we didn't see it pull back all the way down to its, you know, lawsuit days of 20 22 cents or something like that or 20 or 17 cents whereas xlm is pretty much back to the same price i bought it two years ago um i do believe that xrp army is just super strong there's a lot of people that believe in this technology the technology itself is is sound strong we see brad spreading it around the world so you know i'm not surprised that it's it's holding up in this time frame however however i don't think we've seen the bottom and when we do see the bottom I will be curious to see if we do see a 17 cents XRP again. I hope we don't. It took a lawsuit to get there, and I'd be disappointed if we get there again. But we're not that far away at this point. Amazing. And we do have a big announcement, guys. July 4th, we are having a flash sale on all of our merchandise at the Warrior Academy store. You're going to be able to buy a lot of this awesome clothing for 50% off on July 4th. So please go ahead and take advantage of this unique opportunity. We got 161 live listeners out there. Show us some love and smash that like button. We are going to call it a week for you guys, and we are going to continue to bring you the most relevant and impactful crypto-related topics every single day of the week. I want to say thank you to Johnny Crypto. Thank you to Jackie and thank you to the Node Defender. And I mean, sorry, NFT Tones. We are going to close it out today and we'll see you guys in 71 hours. Like we always say, Warriors, rise. Get your shit together, baby. Thank you for joining us. Let's go.